A lively mix of steamboat tradition and trendy high tech. Famed sporting home of the Kentucky Derby, the Louisville Slugger, and the Valhalla Golf Club. Site of the first PGA Championship of the new century. The Professional Golfers Association of America presents the season's final major, Glory's Last Shot. The PGA Championship. From the Valhalla Golf Club in Louisville, Kentucky. The Louisville Slugger. Tiger triples at Valhalla. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Nance and welcome to beautiful and breezy Valhalla. This course was designed by five-time champion Jack Nicklaus and he has seen his course so quickly rank among the finest courses in the country. For Nicholas, at the age of 60, he's competing here and also completing an emotional farewell tour through the major championships that has taken him this year from Augusta National to Pebble Beach and on to St. Andrews. Attention at the 82nd PGA Championship is focused on Nicholas's heir apparent in greatness, defending champion Tiger Woods. The 24-year-old Woods, number one in the world rankings by an unprecedented margin, comes off dominating victories in the United States and British Opens that made him the youngest ever to capture the career Grand Slam. In both Opens, he set scoring records to go with his Masters record. With the media's reservoir of superlatives running low, can Tiger add the PGA record to his collection and become the first since Ben Hogan in 1953 to win three majors in a year? He says he plays well on Nicholas courses. 91 of the top 100 golfers in the world are here. Potential contenders that can block Tiger's path, American veterans and past PGA champions like Hal Sutton and Davis Love, or Phil Mickelson still thirsting for his first major, leading a powerful international pack. Are Ernie Els runner-up in the first three majors of the new millennium? Vijay Singh, the Masters champion and winner of the 1998 PGA. Colin Montgomery, perennial winner of the European Order of Merit. And Lee Westwood, its current leader. Darren Clark, who knocked off Woods in the final of the World Match Play Championship. And the exciting young Spaniard, Sergio Garcia, who chased Woods home last year at Medina. Valhalla's varied par fives will be telling, and this championship could well come down to the reachable 542-yard par 5 18th, as it did in 1996, when Mark Brooks birdied this hole at the end of regulation, and then again some 20 minutes later in a playoff to defeat Kentucky native Kenny Perry. Who will be the next champion to put his name on the historic Wanamaker Trophy? Conditions for the first round were sunny and summery, and the Louisville community turned out in full force. Fans began arriving early, attracted by the inspired 9.13 a.m. pairing of Nicholas Woods and Singh. Distracted by the death of his mother the day before, Nicholas was four over par, facing this long par putt at number six. Tiger, never before paired with Jack, also started slowly and was even par through six, but he was putting for eagle at the par five seven. It doesn't get much closer than that. A routine birdie for Tiger, who feels one of those patented hot streaks coming on. A huge nine iron set up this birdie try at eight. Nicholas hit a six iron and kitted Tiger that he should turn his club head upside down so it would look as though they hit the same club. Tiger was down two under. On the 418 yard ninth hole, a guided missile of a drive left Woods with a wedge approach. And the rewarding result spun with the slope and led to a third straight birdie. A birdie at the par 5 10th made it four in a row, and following a par at 11, he ran down this birdie putt at the difficult 12th to plunge five under for the round. If Woods was hitting his stride, Masters winner Singh was struggling to find his. Kentucky's famous bluegrass makes for torturous rough, and there was plenty of it framing Valhalla's fairways and greens. Here, Singh failed to get up and down at 16. The bogey would drop him to plus three. He would finish with 77. 
Meanwhile, a couple of lesser knowns made an early impact, like Edward Fryatt, a 29-year-old Englishman living in Las Vegas, in the field as an alternate, using a little body English to coax in this birdie at 18. A bogey-free 69 put his name on the leaderboard. Now you see Scott Dunlap, who's won almost everywhere in the world except the PGA Tour. Now you don't see him. The 37-year-old bachelor is in over his head in the deep bunker, fronting the reachable 18. A good place to miss if you go for the green and two. Dunlap's blind sand shot came out well enough to leave him a short birdie putt. For a round of 66 for Dunlap. Today was um, a lot of fun. Um, hadn't played in three weeks since the British and no expectations, actually battling a, bit of, battling a bit of a head cold. Really didn't do much last week at all, just sat on the couch trying to get healthy, so didn't really know what would happen today, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Darren Clark of Northern Ireland had a lot of fun as well on Thursday, especially on the par fives. He birdied all four of them. The Husky lad who disdains the game's physical fitness craze came out of that popular front bunker on 18 and then holed the putt for a four under par round of 68. Anytime you go out in the first round of any any tournament, let alone a major, you know you want to get off to a good start, and uh, you know certainly I'm very pleased with with that uh, six year. A relaxed Davis Love the third, son of the late great PGA teaching professional Davis Love Jr., three under through 13. His big swing looking good at the 217 yard 14. The perennial Ryder Cupper cleverly used a fellow competitor's ball for a carom shot that gave him a kick in birdie to go four under where he finished. A year earlier, Tiger had used his famous tunnel vision to win the 1999 PGA Championship at the majestic Medina Country Club. It came down to a battle between 23 year old Tiger Woods and potential rival Sergio Garcia, a fiery 19-year-old. Garcia played dangerously from the exposed roots of a large tree that blocked his path to the 16th green. With youthful exuberance, he sprinted and scissor kicked up the fairway to glimpse the ball reaching the green. Without flinching, Garcia found a way to make an incredible par at 16. Now it was imperative that Woods, leading by one, hold this eight-foot par putt at 17. What followed? A triumphal walk of 18, a photo op with the Wanamaker Trophy, and Woods was ensconced as the youngest PGA champion since Nicholas in 63. Nicholas and Woods relished each other's company at Valhalla. Though Nicholas was frustrated with his play the first day, he missed the green badly at the par 4 17th, but thrilled a vast throng with this depth pitch from the rough to salvage par. Woods also missed the green and had to make a tricky double-breaking putt for par. He called it his best putt of the day. Woods reached the greenside bunker on the par 5 18th with a three wood and an iron, and this time he needed an up and down for birdie. Too bad he couldn't see and almost went in for eagle. Nicholas's try for a closing birdie. The five-time PGA champion signed the card for 77. Tiger touched up his birdie to tie Scott Dunlap for the lead with a 66 that his legendary playing partner said could have been a 60. I had a hard time getting focused to start with and uh, hit the ball very poorly and then I really didn't get a whole lot better, but I really more enjoyed watching Tiger. It's the first time we played in competition and, uh, uh, you know, when we played practice rounds before, he's, you know, he hit shots here, hit shots hit, but the, the focus that he has, the shots that he hit, uh, the the absolute control of what he's trying to do was uh, amazed me a lot. For me, I felt like I was just kind of blended in. I just kind of went on about my business. He was getting all the accolades and all the applause, and I just kind of moseying around and was able to kind of basically play in peace. Uh, he, he grinded just like uh, just like he always does, and that's uh, one of the things I admire about him, and just a true gentleman to play with. The lowest scores in the first round came early, before the wind picked up. 
Phil Mickelson's off to a credible start pursuing his first major championship. Mark Brown's a club professional from New York State. An elite foursome was clustered at two over par. These notables would need a good second round to survive the cut. The Louisville Slugger Museum was the setting for the PGA Championship exhibit, a history of the season's final major. On display were commemorative plaques, pictures, and artifacts of all the past winners. Famous golfers demonstrated the strokes that made them successful during Tuesday's Champions Clinic. A large turnout of attentive fans gathered to pick up tips. Are you aiming over there? I see them really go like that from the top. They're trying to create their speed back here and it's all spent by the potential of making the club go as Swing harder. Well, when you swing harder, the only thing that happens is everything goes faster except for the club head. In 1945, Byron Nelson won 11 tournaments in a row, a record not likely to be broken. The match play PGA Championship at Moraine Country Club in Dayton was number nine in the streak. Coming to the PGA to win in 45, uh, yes, I was kind of expecting to win. It was more difficult to win the tournament than I thought it would be the way I was playing, though, I'll admit, because there didn't anybody that didn't play well against me. Fortunately, I played just a little bit better and happened to be lucky finishing strong in all my matches. Lord Byron was as modest as he was successful. More than three inches of rain fell overnight, but sparkling weather greeted the second round. Early starter J.P. Hayes took advantage of the more receptive conditions. He was five under par teeing off on the 11th, a 168-yard par three with a testy, elevated green surrounded by deep bunkering. When Hayes is putting well, he feels he keeps his head down until the ball's in the hole. And he's putting well this week. Just watch. That birdie gave him a share of the lead. This birdie putt on the short par 4 13th, head down, gave Hayes the outright lead at 7 under. The 35-year-old journeyman finished with a 68. It's halfway, you know, it's a lot of golf laps, but uh, I'm playing well and uh, I'd love to have the opportunity to uh, keep it going. It's fun, but um, there's a lot of work left, so hopefully it'll still be, uh, or it'll get exciting on Sunday afternoon. First round co-leader Scott Dunlap showed no sign of a letdown. He left himself this long birdie putt on the par three third hole. It rolled and rolled and rolled into a tie for the lead at minus seven. The imposing international group was faring well. Ernie Ells of South Africa, second in the first three majors of the year. A problematic situation at 13, but solved with one golden stroke. The birdie improved his foothold to two under. Why is Spain's Garcia so happy? He needed a hot start Friday and quickly fired one. Garcia birdied the first two holes and then attacked the 208-yard third with a towering iron shot to prime birdie territory. His dead-eye putt got him to one under. Australia's Stuart Appleby nailed this birdie on 11 to go three under par for the championship. A three-time winner on the U.S. Tour, Appleby was positioning himself well for the weekend. It's the worldliest PGA yet, welcoming 48 players from 21 countries, including megastars Garcia, Els, Nick Faldo of England, Greg Norman of Australia. Definitive coverage of their play in the season's final major was beamed back home by media from around the world in a colorful jumble of native languages. <laughs> the television compound with all its high-tech wizardry was abuzz throughout the week enabling hundreds of millions of viewers in 139 countries to watch the championship.
Let's get back to our drama within a drama, the Tiger Jack Summit. Tiger reached the 535-yard second hole with a 300 second shot to earn a 40-foot eagle putt. He smartly left it under the hole, two putting for his birdie. Most par fives play as par fours for the Tiger man, who moved into a share of the lead at seven under. Nicholas grinding to make the 36 hole cut, also birdied number two. That coupled with an opening birdie brought the greatest player of them all to plus three. Bob May, a former California junior whiz who had been dividing his time between the U.S. and European tours, began to gain ground with this birdie on 11 to go to five under par. Dunlap's third shot to the par five seventh. On the flag all the way. And he would hold the birdie putt to move to eight under par and into the lead alone. But no lead is safe with this phenom tailgating you. Woods reached the rugged fifth hole, a 465 yard par four with a nine iron, and then smoothed in the 10 footer for a birdie that allowed him for just a moment to celebrate with his caddy, Steve Williams. A tie at the top. At the 402 yard 15th, May's bold approach threatened the cup. With the green softened by the storm, players were going for hole locations they would have treated more carefully the day before, and the galleries were loving it. May birdied and was six under. Dunlap, whose sister Paige plays the LPGA Tour, made this birdie and led alone at nine under par. His competitive juices flowing like the nearby Ohio River. Tiger responded with a two-putt birdie on seven to move the nine under. The finesse complements the power. Dunlop was still nursing a heavy cold. He had a birdie putt across most of the 10th green. He rammed it. And to his own surprise, as much as anyone else's, he was now 10 under and leading the championship. Tiger's eight iron shot was 12 feet under the hole, just where he wanted it at the eighth. This to join Dunlap at 10 under. May, who fancies speedboats and fast motorcycles, found himself in fast company, finishing at six under par with rounds of 72 and 66. I try to treat every tournament the same, whether it's a major or not. Um, you know, I want to play as well as I can, no matter what tournament it is. You know, at the end of the tournament, if you're to win or play great, then you realize what it, what it really is. But if you, uh, you, know, you try to focus on it's a major, this and that, I think you just put more added pressure on yourself. Dunlap's wild drive on the fearsome 467-yard par 4 12th cost him a bogey. Love converted this birdie putt at number six to get to six under par. But the 1997 PGA winner would bogey the last two holes and wind up at seven under par. Meanwhile, the sprawling 18th green area, spectator heaven, where Dunlap had a roller coaster putt for Eagle. The birdie gave him a two round total of 10 under. I think the whole world expects Tiger Woods to win this tournament, so um, it'd be nice if I'm the one continuing to put heat on him as we get into late on Sunday, but I've got a long way to go to get there. The subject of Dunlap's discourse played his eight iron to the scenic 15th, and it was a dart. Oh. 
With the birdie, Woods led the championship at 11 under par. Tour veteran Fred Funk, the straightest of drivers, birdied 18 and showed us a new dance step and would sleep on a seven under par score. Nicholas needed to birdie the last two holes to make the cut and he had this 13 footer for birdie at 17. Tiger lined up a 40 incher for his par at 17. Surprisingly, the ball careened out of the cup. It was his only bogey of the day, and he lapsed into a tie for the lead at 10 under. Well, let's finish it off the right way. Did they ever. On his third shot at 18, Jack was thinking nothing but eagle with a sand wedge into the wind from 72 yards. And he came that close. Tiger had a buried lie in the front bunker for his third. Fifteen feet for birdie. And a moment this championship will never forget. The stage was left for Jack. He put it out for the last time in PGA Championship history with a birdie. Playing with Jack was, was obviously an honor and a privilege, but when you're out there playing, it is great to talk to him and enjoy his company, but to be honest with you, I'm out there grinding, grinding away at my own game, and, and so is he. And, it was kind of neat coming on 18, uh, listening to it and, and, and watching him. I hit the last shot in there and it was stiff and almost hold it. It was pretty cool. I said to myself, I said, if you're going to be out here, play golf. And then I started playing and I played fairly decently. And the, the young man that I played with, it was just, I mean, when I see, I knew that he was good, but I'd never played with him in a tournament before. And he is so much better than I thought he was that it just absolutely amazed me. It was, it was, it was, quite, it was a, a unique experience for me to play with him the last two days, and uh, I think he enjoyed playing with me. Tiger and Jack, champions past and present, together, step for step. It's worth looking back one more time with the eloquence that only CBS's Dick Enberg can provide. A grand celebration produced by the game's greatest player, and the young prodigy whose greatness dares to accomplish even more. Placed together, competing for the first time, as if to condense several decades of golf into this singular moment. As added weight, the five-time PGA champion carried the emotional burden of a mother's recent loss, yet obedient to her dying wish to play on. The 24-year-old heir apparent openly relished his company, this chance to impress the master, and he did while offering all the proper courtesies to the hero he has followed and did follow. Understanding fully this was his time to politely move through, not rudely push aside. It was good to see modern heroes unconsciously emulate those they once pretended to be. All the while scrubbed and straight-backed, laser-eyed on pronounced goals to make his own history. Late Friday, the co-stars into the 18th hole sunset and the Bears' golden encore. And he proudly authored a lasting memory, reminding us of a talent that has inspired so many, a going away present to golf.
the ball barely missing, but symbolically, the shadow made eagle. Admired by all with wishful wonder. And then the spotlight was on his own magical lightning and a chance to leave his final impressions. A special genius acknowledged by the highest source. Now it was okay for him to go. What a fit, greatness forever connected. A century's best squeezing phenomenal promise. All to be remembered in a maestro's major farewell. The Kentucky Derby Museum at storied Churchill Downs was the site on Wednesday before the championship as Nicholas accepted the PGA Distinguished Service Award, presented annually by the PGA of America to recognize major contributions to the game and society. PGA President Will Mann. Jack, the PGA salutes you for a lifetime of remarkable achievements, but more so for your integrity and sportsmanship that you have displayed and taught all of us throughout your career. On behalf of the PGA, I'm very proud to present you the Distinguished Service Award. I greatly enjoyed my involvement with the PGA of America. The organization, of course, 25,000 uh, more men and women. Uh, I've, got, I've got the greatest admiration for the work they do, the time they spend, uh, particularly, particularly with kids. And, uh, you know, without, without their hard work uh, and, and promoting the game, introducing it to millions of, millions of people at the grassroots level, um, we, uh, we're in trouble trying to promote this game. I thank the PGA for the, this beautiful, distinguished service award trophy. Well, but as, as many of you might know, I lost my mother this morning. And, but I was fortunate to spend uh, about an hour and a half with her on Monday. So I know it was her wish for me to be here tonight and to stay and play tomorrow. It'll be a big day for both of us. Thank you. <laughs> At the Dallas Athletic Club during a ferocious heat wave in 1963, Nicholas overtook Bruce Crampton with a final round 68 to join Ben Hogan, Byron Nelson, and Gene Sarazen as the only winners of the PGA, U.S. Open, and Masters. Dallas was probably 110 to 115. It was hot. I remember when we finished the tournament, uh, we tried to hold the trophy. There wasn't a chance to hold that Wanamaker trophy. As much as we wanted to hold it, nobody could put their hands on it. He would win the PGA four more times. Tiger could not have shot higher for his two rounds. He led by one at the 36 hole mark. Bob May, playing on a special exemption from the PGA, turned in the day's best round of 66. Tom Kite is low senior. This group needs a big move on moving day. Several big names would make the cut sliding. And several wooden Masters champion BJ Singh International stars Nick Price, Greg Norman, Players Championship winner Hal Sutton, and 1991 PGA champion John Daly. The 25 low finishers in the 2000 PGA Club Professional Championship qualified for a thrill of a lifetime week at Valhalla. They fraternized with and played alongside the game stars, most of whom developed under the caring tutelage of PGA professionals. A confident swinging Tim Phelan, an assistant professional from Texas, had won the Club Professional Championship at the Oak Tree Golf Club in Oklahoma and was thrilled to be in Louisville. These tour professionals are their idols. They've watched them on TV, and anytime you get an up close and personal, and they get to hit golf balls next to them, I think it would obviously be a tremendous thrill. Mark Brown was one under par after the first round with his split-handed putting technique. 
I mean, I came here trying to make the cut, and uh, if I make the cut, that'd be great, and then, you know, see how high up I can go. I mean, it was fun playing with them, and it was nice seeing how their games play. It was a great experience my first time. But it was Frank Dobbs of Port St. Lucie, Florida, who gained the distinction of being the only club professional to make the cut. Saturday was a beautiful day for being outdoors and for scoring in the third round. A 50-year-old Tom Watson, like May, the recipient of a special invitation, excited the morning crowds with four birdies on the front side and then hold this birdie putt from off the green on number 10 to go under par for the tournament. He'd been frustrated of late by left to right putts, but a straighter stroke back and through was the cure this day. He birdied 12 and 14, and at the 15th, from 35 feet, another birdie, four under. He needed one more birdie on the final hole to tie the course record of seven under par 65. Watson has won all the major championships except the PGA. And with that putt, he was in at five under par for 54 holes and a share of the course record. I've had a few opportunities to win here. I, I, I don't have any delusions that uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be in, in the hunt. You think I can come back with 10 shots behind to beat Tiger Woods? Left-handers were on the march. Phil Mickelson with an eagle chip at the second. Six under for the championship. And Australia's Greg Chalmers, who eagled the hole the day before, did it again on the strength of a spectacular long second shot. And he joined in the fun at six under. Called Snake by his Aussie mates, Chalmers has played the U.S. Tour the last two years since going through the qualifying tournament. Mickelson at the par four fifth, trying to snake in a long birdie putt. Continues to build momentum, now eight under. Davis Love joined the crowd, plundering the second hole. An eagle chip, leaving an easy birdie to go eight under himself. Two-time Masters winner, Jose Maria Olafable, started the day at even par, but came to the short 13th six under. Known for laser-like iron shots, he followed a one iron off the tee with a sand wedge that led to another birdie. Ola Pavel was seven under par and on his way to the record books. Back at the start, Tiger Woods was the defending champion. Scott Dunlap was 68th in the 1999 PGA, his only previous appearance. They made up the lead pairing and both parred the first hole. Tiger's three iron shot on the vulnerable second was well left in the clumpy rough but he demonstrated his versatile recovery skills with a feathery pitch to birdie range. Dunlap chipped for eagle. Showed no signs of nerves in that stroke. Tiger from 10 feet for birdie. We just thought he was in trouble. Minus 12. And the unheralded Dunlap touched up his birdie for minus 11. At the 444 yard par 4 16th, Olaf Fabel had a six iron approach. He was coming off another birdie at 15 and was now eight under par on the round and delivered another iron shot of surgical precision. The quiet Spaniard then dunked the 12-foot birdie putt, nine under par. Stuart Appleby, a former Australian rules football player, advanced with a birdie at the par three eight, and he was nine under par for the championship. But the man of the hour was Olaf Pavel, who had a long birdie putt over a ridge at 18 for 62 
in the lowest major championship round of all time. He would two putt for par, giving him the course record with 63 and tying the major record for lowest round ever. I would love uh, to have done a 10 under par. I was looking for that 62 when I was uh, playing the last two holes and uh, I just came one short, but uh, obviously really pleased with that round. Back on the par five seventh, a determined Dunlap finessed an up and down for birdie and was 12 under par for the championship. Tiger just killing the par fives, very nearly eagled the seventh. His two putt birdie kept him a stroke in front of Dunlap. Woods might have run away with the US and British Opens, but he wasn't running away with the year's final major. The players got the attention and the $5 million purse. The platoons of enthusiastic volunteers got the satisfaction of helping their hometown and its charities. They were everywhere doing anything and everything asked of them. Without the support of the volunteers, our championship would be nothing. Uh, we have approximately 3,000 volunteers here at Louisville and we've developed a relationship with the community and we hope that we do that in every community we go. The well-organized volunteers helped out in the press tent and staffed the busy and well-stocked merchandise tents. Their good nature, brightening visitors stay in Louisville. Thomas Bjorn, the only Dane to win in Europe, had this putt for Eagle at the par five tent. And he was in contention at nine under par. Bob May continued to lurk ominously. He was eight under after he birdied the ninth. Bunkered at the 10th and two, May splashed out splendidly for a fourth birdie in a row. Nine under for the championship. With the course still soft from the late week rain, it was open season on birdies, and Tiger's 20-footer at nine propelled him to a lead score of 14 under. His massive gallery surged to find field position on the 10th. There, facing his third shot on the par of five, Tiger delivered a crisp pitch. It led to a birdie and a 15 under par total. Woods found trouble on the treacherous 12th. He pulled his three wood tee shot into the trees. He would need two more shots just to reach the green. However, playing partner Dunlap was precise, talking to his five iron approach. Tiger with a short putt for bogey. He pushed it. It led to a double bogey six and jolted him back to reality and to a tie for the lead when Dunlap made his birdie on the same hole. Now they were each 13 under for the championship. May, who beat Colin Montgomery to win the 1999 British Masters, made his birdie putt on 15 and was two back in third position. Here's how they stood late in the third round. It was Dunlap's turn to struggle at the par 3 14th. Even though he had hit the flagstick from the sand, it didn't prevent a bogey. Back to 12 under. May fired a seven iron at the 16th green. 
and knew when it took off, it was on the mark. Birdie, 12 under. J.P. Hayes had taken heart from Tiger's double bogey. And thanks to this approach, birdied the 15th hole to reach 10 under. The likable Greg Chalmers birdied 18 for a 54-hole score of 10 under par. He attributed the low scoring to ideal conditions and the unprecedented pace Tiger had set all summer. A record 53 players broke par in the third round alone. The pace setter Supreme misplayed the 15th, jerking his approach shot into the gallery left. A magnificent effort from the high grass. Still, he had this putt for par. and he fell back to 12 under again. Suddenly there was a three-way tie for the lead as the third round neared its close. Dunlap suffered an odd twist of fate on 17 when his ball ran through a fairway bunker into an awkward lie in the rough. His approach came up short and he bogeyed to lose his share of the lead. May missed the fairway on 18, the only one he missed all day, and couldn't convert his long birdie putt. So he finished par par for a second straight 66 and a 12 under score he figured could land him in the last pairing with Woods on Sunday. He's, you know, obviously the, the greatest player in the world right now, and, uh, you know, I, I look forward, if I get a chance to play with him, it'd be great. You know, it'd be a good learning experience, and uh, who knows, what, you know, anything could happen. J.P. Hayes had hung in the championship long enough. He was at 18 over the green and two. He would take fewer putts than any of the other leaders. And he didn't mind settling for a two putt birdie and a three round total of 11 under par. I hit some darn good shots under, under, uh, you know, under some pretty good pressure there. Where, uh, where a bad shot could have, could have, you know, really hurt me. So um, I was pleased uh, at that, and uh, but we still got to catch him. Him, of course, being the game's regal young ruler, who was heading up 18 with Dunlap. Dunlap hit driver driver into the front bunker. Needed to get his sand shot close for a birdie at the final hole. Wondrous touch. Woods, often out driving Dunlap by 30 yards, hit three wood, three wood to arrive at an eagle chance from 40 feet. His approach putt could serve as a prototype. The little birdie putt that remained capped an uneven round for him of two under par 70. He'd birdied 11 of 12 par fives in his 54 hole total of 13 under par. Dunlap's tap in birdie also was good for a 70, matching his playing partner Woods for the day. He was a stroke behind at 12 under. There's pressure everywhere. I mean, obviously he's looking for places in, in history books and then anyone else up there uh, within, within distance is um, you know, looking for a, a, a real first. What you gotta do, go out there tomorrow and, and play well. Obviously you got a few guys right there with a the chance to win, but uh, you know, I'm sure uh, the golf course won't be playing as easy as it was today. I saw the pen locations for tomorrow and they're, they're tucked pretty good, so it'll be a pretty good test. Tiger was being crowded for the lead. 1993 champion Paul Azinger was threatening. Watson and Kite were playing like 30-year-olds. Els isn't going to complete a runner-up slam. Fast Foreign Company was at even par. 
Valhalla, mythological Hall of the Gods, was the scene of Mark Brooks' dramatic sudden death playoff victory over Kentucky native Kenny Perry in 1996. Tiger Woods was a teenage amateur watching on television. Both Brooks and Perry were seeking a first major. You know, in 96, we thought it was tremendously successful from a standpoint of the enthusiasm of the community. It's been even stronger in 2000. Then we were able to take what we learned in 96 from the golf course, make some adjustments, and it certainly turned into an even better golf course. We're really excited about Valhalla. We think it has a great future and will be that traditional site we've been looking for. In the next 10 years, we'll start Atlanta Athletic Club with, with two PGAs there, the U.S. Open. We go to Hazeltine. We go to Oak Hill. We go to Whistling Straits, a new golf course, but a great one, the Country Club, back to Medina, Oakland Hills. Great golf courses, rich history, and inserting a new golf course occasionally. In 1962, Gary Player held off a hard-charging Bob Goldby. I played in the British Open the week before, and I missed the cut. And I left there with uh, my tail between my legs, a little bit uh, dejected, and then arrive at uh, Aronimink, a course that I just loved, an area that I just loved and uh, got a great feeling there and um, putted very well, played very well. So that is really a very, very special memory. Tiger Woods, a student of golf history, is poised to make more of his own as we begin the final round of the 82nd PGA Championship. He can become the first player since Denny Shute in 1937 and 38 to repeat as PGA champion, the first ever in 40 plus years of stroke play. He would be the only player other than Ben Hogan to win three professional major championships in a year. And if he shoots at least a 67, he will add the PGA scoring record to his records in the other three majors. The leaderboard is crowded with surprise contenders. Bob May, Scott Dunlap, J.P. Hayes, and an international set featuring Australians Greg Chalmers and Stuart Appleby, Denmark's Thomas Bjorn, and two-time Masters champion Jose Maria Olafable of Spain. Only five strokes separate Woods and 10th place. So far in his young career, Woods is 4-0 in major championships where he holds the lead through 54 holes. So he is the favorite here in this horse race in Kentucky. Sunday was another mild day that drew another sellout gallery. Appleby trailing by four and intending a fast start, birdied the 446 yard first hole and quickly went to 10 under par. His fellow Aussie, Greg Chalmers, wasn't so fortunate in the following group. A wayward drive resulted in a difficult second shot that resulted in a bogey. Chalmers would go to the second tee, nine under. Denmark's Bjorn, who said after the third round, the pressure was on Tiger, dialed in a long distance putt for Eagle at number two. He gauged it magnificently, settled for birdie on a must birdie hole. He was now 10 under for the championship. Scott Dunlap, whose best finish on tour in 2000 had been a tie for third in the Players Championship, stood up to Woods in the third round, matched him with 70, but he started the fourth round shakily. His drive on the opening hole went into the formidable rough. And he missed the long putt for par, dropping back to 11 under. Dunlap continued to struggle on the second, missing the green and bringing on another bogey. Now he was 10 under. They would be playing for the venerable Wanamaker Trophy, as well as a $900,000 first prize. The two products of Southern California Junior Golf Programs, separated in age by seven years, were off on a joint adventure that would prove more than memorable. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2.30 starting time from Windermere, Florida, 
1999 and defending PGA champion, Tiger Woods. Las Vegas, Nevada, Bob May. They were off and running. J.P. Hayes was one under for the day, but in trouble at the fourth. His third shot jumped out of the rough and scooted long. Our saving putt just missed. 11 under for Hayes. Woods and May parred the first hole. And on number two, May made a marvelous up and down from the sand that gained him the lead when Tiger chipped over the green. And then chipped again to four feet. Then pull his par putt. Birdie for May, minus 13. Uncharacteristic bogey on a par five for Woods, minus 12. Both missed birdie putts on three, and then May's drive on the tight fourth blew into the rough. The rough that was reviewed as extremely penal. May must not have read the reviews, though. He hit his wedge to about three feet and opened his lead to two as Woods made par. IBM provided on-site scoring and information systems at the 82nd PGA Championship. The big board and the think pads in the media tent and hospitality tents, almost always in use, kept the media and spectators up to date on every player's progress. Tiger Woods wasn't the only record setter at Valhalla. PGA.com, the official website for the PGA Championship, powered by IBM hardware, generated its most traffic ever with more than 76 million page views of its online reportage. The in-depth coverage included a custom leaderboard with links to player bios and interviews, breaking news and commentary, all powered by IBM. Woods was being challenged by an unlikely consortium of surprise contenders. Olaf Abel is one under for the day after his 63 Saturday. And he faced this birdie putt at number seven to pull closer at minus 11. Unsure of the wind, May hit his second shot from the fairway on the par four sixth. And the wind had indeed tricked him over the green in two. That's a drain, not a cup. And it bothered May as he went on to bogey the hole. Could Tiger capitalize? He left his first putt six feet short and missed that one to bogey like May. So far, it's been a most untiger like fourth round. Three holes ahead, Appleby putted for birdie. And climb to 11 under. Tiger laid up out of the rough on the par 5 7. This pitch for Eagle. He would go to 12 under. On the 166 yard eight, he hit a light seven iron 12 feet behind the hole and made the putt for back to back birdies and tied May for the lead. Franklin Langham from Augusta, Georgia putted at 11 for his third birdie in a row. And he moved 
to 12 under par. Just two strokes blanketed seven players as the leaders made the turn. Olaf Abel was still gunning at the flags. This was his second shot at the muscular 12th, a par four long enough to be a par five. And he drew it back right behind the hole. This man knows all about last round pressure. Olaf Abel's birdie putt took him to 12 under. After pars at seven, eight, and nine, the cross-handed putting May had this birdie try at 10. And again, he nosed ahead of Woods. Pars just not good enough on this day. However, Woods addressed a birdie putt of his own. And converted, tied at 14 under. May's eight iron to the par 311th was 25 feet right of the hole, which turned out to be a perfect distance. Holding the long birdie putt. And when Tiger parred from the rough, May led once again at 15 under. The unyielding May hit an eight iron from 181 yards at the 12th. The gallery cried, get all over it, and he did indeed. That passed the pressure to Tiger, who had responded with his approach shot, a nine iron to 15 feet. Now this big putt for birdie. What a battle. It made May's putt that much tougher. The birdie left the standings unchanged. It was beginning to smack of match play. The pair parred 13, and this was May's four iron on the 14th. The golf world has been waiting for somebody to step up against Tiger in a major, but nobody thought that somebody would be Bob May, number 48 in the world rankings. Tiger on 14 T. Also a four iron. Watch him use the slope artfully. Woods for his birdie at 14. Dead center, 16 under. And May for his birdie. Uh, he made it interesting, but he continued to lead Woods by one, going to the 15th. May's seven iron approach to the 15th. Go in the hole, it just about did. Woods had misread his first putt and saddled himself with a 15 footer for par. A two stroke swing appeared likely. But no, reflecting on that putt, Tiger would say it was the shot that meant the most to him the last day. Had the habit, and he got it. But May missed his. A golden chance to widen the lead. The wasted opportunity would prove pivotal. They parred 16, and this was Tiger's second at 17. A 94 yard, 60 degree wedge, 100% dazzling. for birdie. Tied May at the top of the leaderboard with one hole to play.
The gallery at 18 was seeing off a procession of near contenders who couldn't keep up with the blazing Woods Bay jewel, but they should be proud. Stuart Appleby finished at 12 under. Bjorn, the greatly improved Dane, was at 13 under. Young Chalmers, who missed the cut in his only other PGA, finished at minus 12, as did Olaf Pappel after a memorable third round 63. J.P. Hayes was seven under in his best PGA showing. Scott Dunlap came in at nine under with a disappointing final round 75. The gallant battlers who had gone toe to toe all afternoon heard a prolonged ovation from the huge crowd after they both reached the green on 18 with prodigious second shots. May charged up and concentrating on the line of his long putt over a mound, raced it clear off the green and had 15 feet coming back for birdie. Somehow, some way, it found the bottom of the cup, an Olympian two-putt birdie. He had birdied the 18th for the first time all week and had shot his third 66 in a row and put the onus squarely on Tiger. Tiger had also been strong with his first putt and had to make this slippery five-footer for birdie or lose the championship in a major upset. One unforgettable clutch putt deserved another. Tiger had played the last 12 holes in seven under, finishing birdie birdie. The two competitors, exhilarated by their brave fight to the finish, both shot 531 on the last nine. Amazing. The Wanamaker Trophy would be decided for the first time by a new three-hole total strokes playoff format. Thousands of fans hurried to the 16th, where it would all begin. Woods was four under par on the playoff holes for the week, May two under. May pulled his tee shot at 16. And for once, he couldn't get to the green. The ball sailing across the fairway into the right rough. Woods, after a two iron into the fairway, zapped the seven iron approach from 196 yards. A good angle to attack the flag. Woods crafted a shot that finished on the upper tier of the hourglass green. Advantage Woods. From a thick lie, May played the only shot he had to a firm, fast green. A pitch and run that landed just barely on the putting surface and tracked toward the hole as if traced by a telestrator. An absolutely superb shot to save par. but Wood still had his 25-footer for birdie. He may be the most perceptive reader of greens many of us have ever seen. The putt swung hard from right to left. An unusual burst of emotion from the young superstar, if not from the thrilled crowd. Woods led for the first time since the second hole and headed briskly to the 422-yard 17th. Again, May had problems off the tee. He drove it into the bank of the left fairway bunker, and his nine-iron second shot found the bunker short of the green. Meanwhile, Tiger drove too far right and had to punch an eight-iron under the trees toward the green. With a little help from the cart path, the ball wound up over the green in a swale, not the most desirable location. Both men would have to improvise to make par. Tiger's long putt from over the green hopped, skipped, and rolled its way to within seven feet for par. May's bunker shot was entirely serviceable, considering the stress of the moment. Tiger would be first. 
his attempt to save par. That preserved the one-stroke lead. However, May knew that every stroke could mean his demise. He knew he had no gimme for his par. Spellbinding stuff. The crowd waiting for the finish at 18 amused itself by doing the wave. While Woods' drive on 18 sailed way left, and he watched warily as it headed toward trees and bushes. The ball popped back into view to scuttle along the cart path and stop on trampled ground where Tiger would have a clear second shot. It was the second cart path in two holes for the scrambling leader. May, surprised at Tiger's wild drive and thinking it was probably in dire trouble, made an incomplete hitchy swing and pulled his own tee shot into the rough. Tiger was in a hurry to learn his fate. His vigorous six iron off a scruffy lie missed the fairway left, thick rough this time that had been clear of gallery footsteps all week. May came out of deep, unpredictable rough on his second shot and could only advance the ball. In fact, he advanced it too far. Neither player ever found the fairway on the par five. Tiger, figuring he had 142 yards to carry the bunker, flew his wedge shot about 140, and it rebounded into the sand. May, trailing by one, wedged to about 25 feet. He would have to contend with a sharply breaking putt, up and over a ridge, out of the valley on the three-tiered green. Tiger was coming out of the front bunker for the third time in the championship and played a shot worthy of the best player in the game. No may be about it now. May had to make his long birdie putt or lose. And it was everything but quite hard enough. And his valiant 21-hole day came up one stroke short. Tiger for his fifth professional major championship. And he's in the history books as the only man besides Hogan to win three majors in a year, and as the only man to repeat his PGA champion at stroke play. Two days earlier on that same putting surface, Nicholas had passed the torch, and now Tiger was sprinting with it. I wanted to concentrate real hard out there today and uh, you know, prove people that I can, I can play out here and it's not a you know, it's not a question anymore. And uh, I went out and played a good solid round of golf and uh, just one shot too short. This is our 82nd PJ Championship. And so much like so many of our championships since 1916, this championship has given us exciting moments, great golf, wonderful memories, and a great champion. On behalf of the PJ of America and, and all of our members who work to make the game so much fun, I'm pleased to present you to Wanamaker Trophy as our 2000 PJ champion. Congratulations. Anytime you get to play against the best and be able to come out on top against the best, it's always going to be more satisfying. And the last two years, PGA Championships drawn the best field, and uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to win. But to be able to tee it up and, and go toe-to-toe you know, -to -toe against the best players in the world, 
that's what you dream about. And that's what you, you work so hard to get yourself in a position so that you are able to do that. And then to come out on top is just a bonus. Woods and May both broke the PGA championship scoring record of 17 under par. Watson more than justified his special invitation. Mickelson's quest for a major continues. Ells never found the spark in Louisville. While club professional Dobbs did well to make the cut in the year's toughest field.